Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. It's been a while since we've given you guys a walkthrough of the garden, and it is just exploding. You know, even though it has been really hot here, because we've been giving the garden adequate water, it is still really thriving. There's some really great things happening in the garden, and we're so excited to show you. Right. Right now, we're running our irrigation system every other day for two hours, and that seems to be doing a very good job of keeping all of the plants watered. So let's start at the front of the garden, and let's just walk through row by row and see what's going on. The very first row here in the garden is a gorgeous row of marigolds. Now last year, this row in our woven weed fabric was used for tomatoes, but I didn't need them for tomatoes this year, and I wanted to plant something in the holes to prevent weeds. So I decided to plant an entire row of these gorgeous marigolds uh, for pleasure because they're pretty, uh, to encourage pollinators to come over to the garden, and marigolds can uh, kind of ward off some pests. So for all those reasons, that's why I put them here. And you guys, they're gorgeous. You may remember that when I planted these marigolds, I cut them way back because when I bought the transplants from the nursery, they were already really tall and long and lanky, and I wanted to encourage them to get bushy like this. And oh my gosh, you guys, did they ever get bushy? And they have produced so many absolutely giant and beautiful flowers. Every day I come out here and I am just filled with joy because there's just so many beautiful flowers. I'm just really pleased with how well these guys have done. I'm standing in between two rows here. This row is an entire row of tomatoes, half slicing tomatoes, half paste tomatoes, and here's a half a row of tomatoes that is just kind of extra tomatoes. So we've only planted one and a half rows of tomatoes, about 30 in this row and 15 tomato plants in this row, and they're doing really well. Actually, uh, we're just starting to get the very first tomatoes ripening of the season. And this is really about the right time. About middle of July is when we start getting our very first tomatoes. And then it just kind of explodes in August. So they're doing really well. They are showing some signs of stress from the heat. Uh, some of their leaves in the middle of the day will kind of curl up a little bit in order to uh, retain some of the moisture in the plants, but we are watering them adequately so they're not dying back. So I'm not worried about that heat stress. One really neat thing this year is that we have seen so many ladybugs. Uh, more ladybugs than I've ever seen. They're just in abundance this year. And maybe that's contributing to the fact that we haven't had any problems with aphids, no white flies on the tomato plants this year. I did one organic spray for uh, tomato hornworms and armyworms, any other kind of caterpillar things because I was seeing some on the plants and they've all died and everything's doing well. Here is an example of two things I wanna show you guys. You can see that these leaves are curling up a little bit because they're in direct sun right now. Uh, they're not turning yellow, they're not turning brown, like they're getting sunburned. Um, they're just doing what they normally do um, and they are, they're still doing well. But right down here, you can see a cluster of tomatoes that are just starting to ripen. They're absolutely gorgeous. Now these are Jetstar tomatoes and this actually is, oh, you guys, look at how gorgeous that tomato is. This is a classic example of a Jetstar tomato. These first tomatoes on Jet Stars are always so big and they're so amazing, very juicy, have just a really nice dense center. This is why we grow Jet Star tomatoes every single year. This here is the other half of that half row of tomatoes and it is planted with our peppers for this year. And we are having lots of success with peppers so far. We have lots of peppers on all of the plants. They're super nice and bushy. I did cut these pepper plants back also when they were young to encourage them to get bushy and produce a lot of fruit and a lot of blossoms. And you guys, it really is working well. Not only do we have lots of baby peppers starting on all of our plants, but they're just loaded with blossoms. 
This here is my favorite pepper plant, the Edgevarsky pepper plant. These um, are red roasting peppers. They're not red yet. They will uh, turn red when they're completely um, ripe. But we have green peppers, the Emerald Giant that I absolutely love, uh, natapenos, which are the not hot jalapenos. We also have standard jalapenos and one kind of chili pepper this year. We're just really pleased with how they're all doing. The next row in our garden is our green beans. You guys, they are doing awesome. And actually the timing was perfect for the green beans because we just pulled all of our green beans out of the greenhouse. And this week, the green beans here in the garden have started to produce. We've done one small harvest so far, but you guys, tonight, we're gonna have a huge harvest of green beans. I'm talking probably a bushel of green beans. They are just completely loaded. We grow the contender green beans. Um, this is a variety that we do every single year. They always do well for us and we always have great success with it. So it's a variety that we'll be keeping around and we save seed, we just replant from year to year. So the contender green beans are definitely a hit. The next row is something that we're trying, we've only tried once before, and honestly the plants so far this year are way outperforming our expectations. These are edamame or soybeans. This is a non-GMO organic uh, soybean that we planted. Uh, they can be used for fresh eating or like, you know, you steam them or boil them and eat them. Uh, we love them as a snack. In general, as a family, we try to stay away from a lot of soy products uh, for several reasons. Some of the hormones that they can build up in your body and also the fact that almost all commercial soybeans in the United States are GMOs. But when we found a variety that we could grow ourselves, we decided to do that so we could have a good snack. Uh, in the evenings or whenever we want that. So they're not producing yet. In fact, they haven't even started to flower yet, but the plants just look absolutely amazing. The next row, as you guys know, is one of my absolutely fa favorite rows in the entire garden, and that is okra. Uh, it To me, okra comes right after the tomatoes. Um, they're not producing yet either, but the plants are looking super healthy. Uh, okra love this hot weather so this has been this will be a great okra year I can know I know it already because they love the hot weather these are the Clemson spineless okra uh, again this is a variety that we plant every single year we save seed from year to year and we just replant and they're doing awesome every year with the okra we get a little concerned because it seems like they're growing so slow they're staying short uh, they're not starting to produce yet uh, and then all of a sudden one day you come out and they've grown three feet overnight and they've got 7,000 okra on them. So uh, we try, we, we're learning year after year to not get concerned so much about that. Uh, they do take a while to start producing because they really do love this hot weather. So they are right on track. There's, I'm not worried about them at all. They're looking great. The other half of this row is our cucumbers. Let's walk down there. This year in the garden, we're doing only one variety of cucumber. It's our favorite variety. It's called Market More. We did other varieties in the greenhouse and kind of just like the green beans, the ones in the greenhouse just got done producing. We actually just pulled them out this week so we could replant some other things. And lo and behold, right about the same time, the ones in the garden started producing. I think we've picked probably about 25 cucumbers this week already. Now, I was just looking here and I see one that I can pick right here. This is about the size that we like them. You can definitely let them get bigger. You can pick them smaller. But this, I think, is the perfect size for eating. Again, these are market more cucumbers. We will save seeds from these as well at the end of the season. And uh, we just replant these every year. But look at these, you guys. They are just loaded with blossoms. The plants look so healthy. Uh, we're training them to go up this trellis so they don't spread out really wide and uh, they're just looking great. Next up is our melon row. This year we are growing cantaloupe on this side, watermelon on this side, and you guys are doing great. We got lots of little cantaloupe started. 
We've got pockets of them kind of all over the place. Just right here, there are four cantaloupe that have started. One, two, there's one over here, three, four. Oh, there's one back there. There's every day, I feel like I'm finding more and more cantaloupe. That is so exciting. We also are growing two different varieties of watermelons, and there are pretty much watermelon growing everywhere over here as well. We have two varieties of watermelon that we're growing this year. Uh, they've both become our favorites over the last few years. The first one is strawberry watermelon, and the second one is sweet Dakota rose. They are both doing really well. They're kind of grow, their vines are kind of growing, um, kind of entangled with each other. So we have both types just kind of growing all over the place. Now we're not gonna be saving seed from them this year because we are growing them next to each other and they could cross pollinate. Uh, we do have plenty of seed for the next years, uh, but I just wanted to add that. You can see we've got watermelons. Look, we've got one here and we have one here. And I think that these are a representation of each one. I think this is a strawberry watermelon and I think this is a sweet Dakota rose watermelon. The strawberries are longer and not quite as vibrant in their colors and the sweet dakota rose is generally um, a round kind of basketball shaped watermelon and more vibrant color differences between the light and the dark we have watermelons like all over the place right now we have one here and in here and there and they're hiding within all of these vines here's two three four five, six, seven. That's just what I can see over here. Eight. It's going to be a great watermelon year and we're really excited. Now, what I'm also excited about are the uh, winter squash that we have planted. We have two varieties of winter squash. One is Canada Crookneck, which you've seen us growing every year for probably the past five years, I'd say. And then this year we're also growing spaghetti squash. They're doing really well. This year we've decided to just grow them on the ground rather than up a trellis. They end up growing on the ground anyway because their vines just explode and grow everywhere. These are the Canada Crookneck. And you can see we already have like really good sized squash growing. Look at that. Beautiful. There are tons of these in here amongst the leaves, but we also have some really great sized uh, spaghetti squash growing so far. Look at this one, you guys. Look at that beautiful spaghetti squash. Now again, because we're growing them close together and they can cross pollinate, we're not gonna save seed uh, from either of these varieties this year, uh, but we do have seed for next year's. Um, and maybe going forward, we'll just alternate every year what kind of winter squash we grow. But these guys are doing great and we're so happy with their progress. The last few rows of our garden are corn. This year we are doing a type of corn that we've never done before. It was actually a variety that was developed by a friend of ours, Danny from Deep South Homestead. This is called Danny corn. Now this corn, even though it's not putting on ears yet, is looking absolutely amazing. This corn will be a dry corn. It's a dent corn. So it's a corn, it's not a sweet corn that will eat fresh. It's a corn that we will allow to dry and then we can use that for cornmeal, corn flour, animal feed, whatever we want to use it for. Um, and we're excited to try that. In the past, we've only really ever done sweet corn. So this will be kind of our first attempt at doing a dent corn. I am super pleased with how well it's doing, how well it's holding up in our heat. Uh, I was really kind of worried because it got so hot so fast and we kind of got the corn in a little bit late but it has definitely made up for lost time. Last week, I was able to fertilize, and you guys, after I fertilized, this corn shot up. It probably has doubled in size in the last week. Now that we've fertilized, we are still planning on putting our woven weed fabric down the rows of the corn, in between the rows. We were holding off to do that till after we fertilized. You can see that the grass is kind of starting to grow up in between the rows. We'll just mow it down and then put our weed fabric over the top. 
We do have our drip system in here, but you guys, this corn, uh, while it's not starting to produce corn yet, it's not putting on ears or anything yet, it is looking absolutely amazing. And I bet it's gonna just continue that way throughout the season. That's it for our big in-ground garden. Let's head over to the greenhouse and we'll show you what's going on in there. On to the greenhouse. We're gonna start on this half over here. Uh, we showed you guys our basil in our last video where we were making pesto. You can see it's starting to grow back already, even just since we cut it for that last video. Um, so it's doing really well. After that, we have our peppers. Now we're already harvesting peppers here in the greenhouse. We have been for a couple weeks. We have here a California Wonder that's a bell pepper. These, we've only picked one pepper off of so far. They seem to be going a little bit slower than some of the other peppers so far. Uh, but they are loaded with blossoms, so I think it's going to still end up being a good plant. Here we have Emerald Giant. I actually picked two of these yesterday that were good size. But you can see there's several others on here that aren't quite ready, but they're getting close. Those are also a bell pepper. Then we have a jalapeno plant, which I picked some off of yesterday to make some salsa. Um, you can see that it's getting a lot of more blossoms as well. And then this plant over here is actually the not-a-peno plant, which is the not-spicy jalapeno. And you can see, I'll pick one. They are, we're picking some of these every day while we're working out here. We're just eating them. You guys, these taste exactly like a jalapeno pepper, but they have zero spice to them. So if you're a person who doesn't like spicy peppers, uh, these are a perfect replacement for you. After that, we're moving on to tomatoes. Um, these two tomatoes right here, um, this one is what's called a Mr. Stripey. Uh, I bought this kind of last minute at the end of the season. So it's a little behind some of the other tomatoes out here, but you can see it's loaded with tomatoes. Uh, I'm excited for it to start to ripen. This tomato was in the same package. It was supposed to be a Mr. Stripey, but I didn't realize until we got home that this is actually a potato leaf variety. Um, so I'm not really sure what this is gonna end up being. Um, my guess is some type of brandy wine. If I had to guess, that's what I would think it probably is. So uh, we'll f figure out. Either way, I bet it's gonna be delicious. Now, this is the part I'm excited about. You guys know how I feel about tomatoes. We've already been harvesting tomatoes here in the greenhouse for well over a month. Look at the size of some of some of these beefsteak tomatoes. These four plants right here, these are what are called a bush beefsteak. And, well, I'm going to pick one. You guys, look at that tomato. That, these are, I've made so many BLTs already this summer. It has been, these tomatoes are just perfect for it. Um, I think this is a variety that here in the greenhouse we will probably start doing every year because they're just doing so well. Um, again, they're called Bush Beefsteak. We got these seeds from a company called Totally Tomatoes. We've talked to you guys about them in the past. We really like their seeds. Um, but you guys, look at the size of these. And it looks like we're going to be doing a good harvest of these later today. Then we move on to Cherry Tomatoes. Again, we've been harvesting cherry tomatoes for well over a month already. These are my favorite variety. These are a variety that I've been growing now for a couple of years. Uh, they are called Juliet's. You can see they're a good size grape tomato or cherry tomato. And the thing that I really like about these is that no matter how hot it gets outside, they don't crack. So many cherry tomatoes, when it gets hot out, start to crack open. These Juliet's never crack open, and they taste delicious. In fact, you guys know me. I'm never out here without a salt shaker. You gotta have some salt on your tomato. You guys, these are my favorite cherry tomato. Along with the Juliet's, we're trying another variety of cherry tomato this year called Large Red Cherry. And... They are also doing very well. I can tell you we haven't had a single one of these split either so far. So like I said, this is the first year we're trying these, but the thing that I like about these even better than the Juliet's is that these are an heirloom. So we could save seeds from these. 
So if these end up being uh, another variety that doesn't split in the heat, uh, we may end up doing more of these in the future because we can save seed. They have an excellent flavor, not very acidic. I'm excited to be having kind of a backup variety to be testing out. And then this last tomato plant that we have is a tomato plant actually that we bought from a friend at the farmer's market this year. She didn't really know what the exact variety was because she just saved seeds from it every year. She just called it a yellow, yellow cherry. So um, you can see that it is producing some nice yellow cherry tomatoes, but in true fashion, they are starting to split. I've actually had to toss several out because they're splitting quite a bit. I can tell you guys just from years of experience now, in my experience, these yellow tomatoes always split more than red tomatoes. I don't know why. I'm sure there's some reason scientifically why it happens. Um, all I know is I think we're probably done with yellow tomatoes after this year. But uh, they do have a good taste. Um, I just don't like that we have to throw so many of them away. This next section of the greenhouse looks pretty barren right now. Uh, that's because we just recently pulled out uh, the cucumbers that we're growing right here, zucchini, and our lemon squash because all of those things were already done for the season here in the greenhouse. We have replanted these four tubs right here. And actually, I didn't know it until we just came out here right now, but it looks like our seeds are starting to germinate in three out of the four tubs. In these tubs, we have done what are called Armenian cucumbers. Uh, we used to grow these in Arizona. They are a heat-loving plant. Uh, they're called Armenian cucumbers, but technically they're not a cucumber. They're a melon. They taste a lot like a cucumber. They're super crispy, um, and they just do really well in the hot weather. So we had some seed, and we figured, why not give it a try and see how it will do here in Missouri? These other buckets for right now, uh, we're just keeping them watered, but we're not replanting them. The Armenian cucumber are what I would consider like a late summer harvest. So we plant these now so we can kind of start harvesting them in the fall. These other tubs are for things that we won't really plant until closer to fall that we'll be able to harvest in the winter. So we need to always be kind of thinking ahead with the seasons here in the greenhouse. Uh, you can see the chives are doing really well. We need to harvest more of those soon. Seems like you just harvest those, and within a couple of weeks, they're right back to being as big as they were. And then we've got just a few odds and ends down here. Sarah's got some flowers that need to be kind of trimmed back and probably moved outside at some point. And then we've got our Malabar spinach. Uh, my intention has been to get a trellis put up for these guys, but that's kind of low on the priority list and other things have just kind of kept coming up. So uh, they're just kind of vining all over the place right now, but uh, it's doing really well. We're happy with it. This is the first year we're trying it. I think the flavor is excellent and I think it's a great spinach alternative. So we're really happy with that. The last thing that I want to show you guys here in the greenhouse are the citrus trees. I know a lot of you have been asking for updates on those and I'm excited with how they're doing. Many of you know that this last spring, we decided that we were gonna try growing citrus here in the greenhouse. Now, our weather is too cold in the winter for citrus to stay outside over the winter, and these trees will need to be moved in the house over the winter. They won't even be able to stay out here in the greenhouse. But we're trying two things. This tree here is a key lime tree, and at one point, because, you know, I got the idea to try this, and we bought them, and we probably bought them too early, and it was still pretty cold. This thing was down to having barely any leaves and we weren't even sure it was gonna continue to survive. But with watering, uh, it has come back. Uh, it is absolutely flourishing now. And you guys can see that, I mean, we're gonna actually have to probably prune it at some point before the fall so that we can move it into the house. It is doing really well. And then this other tree, is what I'm really excited about because this is what I miss from our yard in Arizona is tangerines. This is what's called a Satsuma tangerine and it is also looking absolutely excellent. Um, both of these had a little bit of fruit on them at one point. The key lime has lost all of its fruit which is actually good for this year because it needs to put effort into growing the tree not fruit. The Satsuma also had several tangerines on it all of them have dropped off except for just one. 
that I've decided to leave, I figure it can handle growing one tangerine for me. And you can see it right here. It's looking really good. And hopefully, at some point during the year, we'll have at least one homegrown tangerine to eat, which will be an exciting treat to have. So these guys are doing excellent. Um, I, I'm just really pleased with the way they're going. Well, on this side of the greenhouse, we have some exciting things going on as well, and some things that have been pulled and replanted. Starting up here, these are the celery plants that we're growing. And actually, just earlier this week, I did a big harvest of half of these plants for the freeze dryer. I chopped up the stalks and uh, put them through the freeze dryer. And then I also kind of chopped up the leaves in a food processor and put those through the freeze dryer as well so that I can add the flavor of the celery into soups and stews with just kind of the powdered leaves. Uh, it turned out great. I'm excited to have them uh, for cooking over the next winter and for long-term storage. This is the first year I've grown celery and they're doing really well. Moving on, we have uh, some of the Onions that we tried this year, we just are experimenting trying onions in these buckets. Overall, I'd say we had decent success. They're drying now, so they're, they're as big as they're going to get. Their greens have flopped over, and so for the past few days, I've shut the water off so that they can kind of start the drying and curing process in the soil, and within the next couple days, I'll pull them out. Onions do not store well here in Missouri. I think it's uh, kind of just overall too warm. Even in the root cellars and stuff, they don't do well. So my plan is to keep some out for fresh using and then to freeze dry the rest of them. So that I'll be doing shortly. We have one bucket here of some leek plants that we got from some subscribers. They're doing really well. They're still growing strong. I think in all, we have two buckets, maybe three buckets of leeks. I can't remember. Now, in this area, if you'll remember, we planted green beans as an experiment, and it went really well. Uh, we harvested off of them for fresh eating for probably a month to six weeks, and then the plants were done. And we pulled them out. I have chosen to replant zucchini in these five buckets because... The zucchini that we planted, we ate them all up and they were done producing and so I pulled them, but I'm not ready to be done with zucchini yet. I still want more. So I've planted five buckets of zucchini. You can see here that these two buckets are covered up and I have planted carrot seeds in here. Now it's just been a couple of days, so they haven't uh, germinated yet, but I'm trying to um, plant carrot seeds over the course of a few weeks so that I have different kind of successions of harvest for the carrots. So that's the first round of carrot plantings. These empty buckets, the rest of these empty buckets are just empty for right now. We're continuing to water them um, until I'm ready to plant fall and winter crops in here. More leeks, more basil that we just harvested, some flowers that I've been enjoying but need to be cut back, some chard, and sweet potatoes. The sweet potatoes are doing really well in here. This is another experiment. It was kind of like a, a late afterthought. We were able to get some slips from someone at the farmer's market, so we're trying them in these buckets. But they're doing really well. We're hoping that these will be super successful and growing sweet potatoes in these buckets is the way that we will go over the next few years. Well, that is how things are going here as far as the garden and the greenhouse and all of the things that we're growing. We'd love to hear how things are going on your homesteads this year as well. You guys, if you're enjoying our videos, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. And also remember that the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.